we are learning to understand how Anglo-Saxon rule began to collapse. Now, the main reason that the Anglo-Saxons began to collapse um, was because of this person here, this king here, was Athelred the Unready. In 978 AD, Athelred II, also known as Athelred the Unready, became king of the English. Now, remember, he wasn't king of England, he was just king of the English. It meant he was, you know, a Brett Walder, okay? He was known as a real king. But why was he called Athelred the Unready? Now, Unready also meant badly advised back then. So he was badly advised by his advisors. Now, there were many reasons that Athelred the Unready wasn't the best king for the Anglo-Saxons. And we're going to look at the four reasons as to why he wasn't the best. Now, this is the best opportunity to make notes. First one, people believed that he murdered his half-brother half to become king. This meant that people believed he was so untrustworthy that they couldn't trust a word he was saying. The second point was he kept buying peace from the Vikings. So just as we saw where during the Anglo-Saxon reign in which the Vikings started to come over, you know, they kept buying peace. They kept buying their freedom. And this meant that the Vikings kept taking advantage of this. It also meant that the Vikings could take what they want and they know what they, that the Anglo-Saxons wouldn't do anything back. Number three. In 1007 AD, one of Athelred's advisors stole part of the Anglo-Saxon fleet of ships and burnt them. They lost a whole third of their ships. This meant that if a Viking army was to attack or a Viking army was to invade, they would they'd be defenceless. There wouldn't be anything that they could do. And the last one. He launched an attack, so Athelred launched an attack on the Viking settlers in 1003 AD. This was really important because he launched this attack like a massacre, which basically meant there was no sort of motive. He went in there and he just sort of wiped out a village. This sort of led to the fall of Athelred the Unready. Now, at this point, Athelred owned most, all, mostly all of England. However, after that massacre that we just talked about in the previous slide, the Vikings were really sort of not happy. So someone called Sven uh, Swen came over and took all of this brown section. So this is where the Vikings occupied half of England. Now, the people in this who were English were completely fine for Swen to take over. They were absolutely, they were more than happy because they believed that Athelred the Unready was doing such a bad job that they believed that the Vikings would do such a better job in charge of England. However, this, this didn't really work for Athelred. He fled to Normandy. He didn't like it. OK, he felt he was being opposed. He felt that there was a threat. He didn't have an army. He had no fleet to protect England. So what this meant was that Swen became the king of England. And everyone's happy. You know, he became the king of England and everyone was extremely happy. However, this only lasted for five weeks. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Swen sadly died. So they needed someone else. Ethelred's council of advisers invited him back to return to the throne on the condition that he agrees to make England great again. This was, you know, it was a, a very big condition. However, he came back to them, came back to the, the throne and ruled for another grueling two years, where he was in constant war with Swen's son Canute. Now, this was really important. He'd done such a bad job beforehand that. They had no one else. You know, when Swen died, the people of England really believed that this was a change, you know, that we were under Viking control and that it would be a change for England. However, after a long time and, you know, people not having anyone to rule them, Ethelred's council advisors believed that the best thing to do was to get Ethelred back, OK, and to and to make England great again. However, how was it going to change since the first time? Now, when he came back, it was exactly the same. He was in constant battle with the Vikings. He kept paying the money. He wasn't doing a good job. Now, your task today is to explain how Ethelred's, um, Ethelred's rule was to collapse at the Anglo-Saxon rule over England. So Ethelred was one of the key people that basically led to the collapse of the Anglo-Saxons. And then we start to look at in the next couple of lessons why the Vikings started to come. Use the PowerPoint to explain why Ethelred was a disaster of a king and why it led to the downfall of the Anglo-Saxon rule across England. This needs to be an extended piece of writing. 
So make sure you get all the key facts, the key dates, the key names, it's all spelled correctly and start from the beginning. Make sure your paragraphs have openers. So it says, you know, one of the reasons why Ethelred was such a bad king for England was and then explain your answer. At the end, talk about how this was the disaster for the Anglo-Saxons, how it was the collapse. Collapse is the key word there, that it was the collapse for them. Please make sure you upload this to Google Classroom, either with a photo or send it over to my email.